It's the Real News Network, and I'm Greg Wilpert in Arlington, Virginia. Bolivian political parties and presidential candidates launched their campaigns this week for the May 3rd general election. This upcoming election is meant to make up for the October 20th election of last year, which Bolivia's parliament canceled following the November 10th coup against leftist president Evo Morales. Morales remains in exile in Argentina and is now running for a seat in Bolivia's Senate instead of for the presidency. His designated successor, under the banner of the Movement Towards Socialism Party, is Luis Arce, Bolivia's longtime Minister of Finance under Morales. His running mate is Morales' former foreign minister and indigenous leader, David Chocahuanca. Here is Luis Arce speaking last Saturday during the campaign launch rally in La Paz. Today we face a historic challenge. We need to be able to meet this challenge. We aren't just contesting an election. We are contesting more. We are an important geopolitical reference point for the region. The empire wants to set a signal with us. It wants to bring the Bolivian people to their knees. Arce's main opponent is the incumbent president, Janine Añez, who took the country on a sharp turn towards the right when she took over the presidency following the coup against Evo Morales. Bolivia's right is internally quite divided, however, which could give Arce an opportunity to win the election if it is a fair election. Joining me now to discuss the latest developments in Bolivia is Catherine Lederberg. She is the director of the Andean Information Network and a researcher, activist, and analyst with over, with over two decades of experience in Bolivia. Thanks for joining us again, Catherine. Thanks so much for having me, Greg. So let's start with the campaign. Evo Morales' mass party uh, with the candidates Luis Arce and David Chocahuanca running for president and vice president held a massive campaign rally also on uh, Sunday in the town of Cochabamba. What can you tell us about these campaign rallies and their significance? Well, I think they're very significant because it really shows the grassroots support for MAS. There was a lot of you know, criticism or suggestion on the part of the right that uh, large attendance at MAS rallies was due to public employees that were forced to attend when MAS was in government. You know, we see, for example, the rally outside Cochabamba in Sacaba huge attendance uh, and, and and taking into account that the Anias government has changed even the people who mop the floors in all different government offices. So it really clearly shows there's a lot of grassroots support for MAS. There's a lot of support. There's a lot of concern at the same time about this very far right term, this uh, erratic behavior, this repressive behavior on the part of the INS government, you know, on all levels of public administration and attacks against Moss. So, you know, it's uh, a swing and a momentum that the coup had, we can see, is deteriorating and people are be beginning to become very uncomfortable for the most part with the behavior of this government. Also very uncomfortable because Anya had promised, remember she has no constitutional right to be president of Bolivia, but she had promised to come in as an interim president and call elections, and she has now announced her own candidacy. I think it's important for everyone to remember that Bolivia had an interim government, the government of Eduardo Rodriguez, Belce, who just called elections, didn't, didn't carry out repression, didn't carry out any policy changes. So we have a successful model in Bolivia in 2005 for that. And it's very, very clear that what Añez and her crew are doing is very, very worrisome and very, very different. Yeah, I want to dig a little bit deeper on that issue, um, but just to, to add a little bit more to the background, I mean, uh, after the October 20th uh, election that Evo Morales led with a 10.5% uh, uh, advantage over his nearest rival, Carlos Mesa, it was ultimately canceled because the opposition claimed fraud. Now, uh, the Organization of American States supported the fraud claim, and the military and police called on Morales to resign, which he did on November 10th. And since then, uh, there have been many reports and what you've been talking about, you know, how the uh, Añez government cracked down on Morales and his supporters, and uh, she's reversing all of his policies, even though, as you said, it's supposed to be a caretaker government. Now, what's the mood like in Bolivia in general? I mean, are uh, mass supporters and candidates actually free to campaign? 
Well, that remains to be seen. I think it's pretty important to highlight that Arce returned to the country to begin his campaign, and he was given a legal citation with potential charges at the airport. He had a hearing the next day where it was clear that the detention or the charges uh, and the citation were illegal. At that point in time, you know, a, a Moss congressperson had her phone confiscated. It's not clear what are happening with the charges in that case. Uh, Morales' personal secretary and other officials have been arrested for sedition with uh, no evidence of sedition, terrorism, you know, the arbitrary detentions that block the registry of candidates, um, all sorts of pressure and supervision and very abrasive uh, uh, discourses on the part of Agnes officials. It's not clear how it's going to play out and how uh, freely Moss candidates will be able to run their campaigns. You know, uh, the international community asked for free and fair elections and those conditions right now, I would say, are iffy at best. So I just want to turn to a brief look at the candidates. Uh, what do the two main candidates, Luis Arce of Mas and right-wing president Janine Añez, stand for? And how much popularity does each enjoy at the moment, according to the most recent polls? Well, I think that it's important to note that Añez's initial popularity with, with some of the middle classes and the upper middle classes has deteriorated as it has become clear that her aspirations are far beyond an interim presidency as there have been, you know, clear denunciations of corruption, uh, relatives in the government, uh, irregular activities, uh, and as her government has carried out a very repressive discourse, has been stimulating uh, arbitrary detentions, does not seem to have a good understanding of basic human rights or due process norms, nor do they respect the criteria of international human rights monitor. Um, and they have consistently attacked Bolivian human rights defenders. So I would say that her credibility, which in my opinion was always extremely limited, has eroded significantly. And she also faces criticism from the wide array of candidates on the right. Luis Arce, on the other hand, uh, it has a long reputation as, for his tenure as finance minister. He oversaw a fiscal policy that led to the highest growth rates uh, of Bolivia. Bolivia had one of the highest growth rates for the past year in the entire region, higher than the United States. A strong amount of foreign reserves, which have diminished with the reduction in hydrocarbon prices, but it has allowed Bolivia to weather uh, and maintain economic stability when other nations have, like Argentina have faced the crisis. So we're looking at a, a candidate that Moss has chosen with an ability to appeal to the middle class, an ability to appeal to a return to stability, and uh, to be offset with strong representation from Bolivian social movements and uh, uh, indigenous groups that support mass on the part of uh, a very skilled David Choquehuanca. I find it interesting that um, Evo Morales chose uh, Luis Arce to uh, be uh, the candidate of MAS. Uh, I mean, on the one hand, he's certainly, like you said, he, he uh, was responsible for the very successful economic uh, situation of, of Bolivia. But on the other hand, he doesn't seem very uh, charismatic, at least you know, from that clip that we saw earlier. What do you think? I mean, is that going to be an issue? Um, I, it's not clear. We'll, we'll see. I think that the, the feeling, and I, and I certainly was not privy to the internal discussions and debates within MOTS, which continue to be active, which continue to have uh, different points of views that are constantly negotiated, is that after this period of tumult and this period of uncertainty, we've had four months of uncertainty, conflict, and instability in Bolivia that I think the idea was to go for an option that would project stability, would definitely be a change from the image 
and the political style of Morales, but a continuation of the economic policies and the vision that gained stalwart support for Moss. And, and so it remains to be seen strategically what works here. Some people perceive Añez as very charismatic. I, I don't agree with that, but I think that people are beginning to understand that there's a lot more than charisma involved in this race. There's a lot more at stake. We've you know, seen Bolivia's outward economic outlook downgraded consistently because of the uncertainty. And we're, we're seeing a lot of the criticisms and the coup denials on the part of the Añez government and her backers um, really deteriorating as the situation became, uh, continues to be incredibly precarious. Well, actually, I want to return also to the issue of the uh, October 20th election, uh, which was claimed to have been riddled with fraud. Uh, now, the claim served, of course, for the opposition as the main argument for overthrowing Evo Morales. And the OAS chimed in by uh, presenting an election report that solidified the fraud claim. However, the Center for Economic and Policy Research has done a detailed analysis of the reform report, which it, uh, which it debunks for a large extent and will do a follow-up report that is on that analysis that uh, that CEPR has conducted uh, as soon as the, the final analysis comes out. But uh, what I want to ask you, is that October 20th election at all still an issue in Bolivia itself? And um, I mean, uh, and is it going to have an impact also on uh, the, the, the fairness and transparency of the upcoming election? It, it, right now, I feel like the Bolivians are still in emergency mode. I mean, there's a lack of clarity about the elections. It'll be interesting to see what the follow-up reports suggest. Um, but really, uh, a, a moment of in extreme conflict, although the bullets have stopped flying, that there's a real focus on the upcoming elections. Uh, it's interesting to note that uh, you know the electronic problems with the rapid count here are very similar to the problems that existed in the Iowa caucus electronic monitoring. I, I, I think it's an, there are many parallels between political developments in both countries. But, but it's not clear, and I think that's going to be an issue that is going to come up again as soon as the fires are out or as hopefully Bolivia will return to uh, a country with rule of law, respect for basic human rights. I think it's very interesting to note that the opposition, although, well, now the, the Anya's government and right-wing allies criticized the election results, but yet did not uh, participate in the OAS audit. They jumped on the OAS results, but yet they've been extremely critical and unaccepting of the Inter-American Commission and other OAS uh, organisms' findings on human rights violations and even extrajudicial executions in Bolivia. I, I, I feel that they pick and choose the, the findings of an international organism. Uh, and, and, they, and although the Bolivian government has signed to allow this study, they they constantly reject the results. It's important that an inter-American commission uh, expert group arrive in the country soon, because right at this point in time, there is still a great deal of human rights violations going on and no consistent external monitoring. Hmm. I find the point that you raised about Iowa quite interesting, considering that uh, also, you know, the, the, the parallel is really quite amazing, considering that they stopped the vote count, uh, just like in Bolivia, except in Bolivia, of course, this led to a coup and to, uh, uh, to a nullification of the entire vote. In the U.S., it was considered to be, a, you know, not, some, not a, such a big deal, uh, and they were allowed to continue with the final result. Anyway. We're going to have to leave it there for now, but we're going to continue to follow the uh, the campaign leading up to the May 3rd election. There's still lots of time until that happens, um, but we're going to continue to follow it. I was speaking to Catherine Lederberg, director of the Andean Information Network in Cochabamba, Bolivia. Thanks again, Catherine, for having joined us today. Thanks so much for having me. And thank you for joining the Real News Network. Thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, but do us one more song favorite. Hit the subscribe button below. You know you want to. Stay up on the videos.